happy Friday. I hope this finds you well. And welcome back to CBC Cast, where we point you towards Christ so that you can better rest and trust in Him. I want to talk about truth for a moment today. Maybe you're like me, but I so much just want to know what is true in this world. And I'm not just talking about over the last year and a half. There's been a lot of confusing areas there where I'm like, just tell me what, what is true here. I'm talking about in life itself. I just want to be able to trust in the right thing. And here's why. One of my greatest fears in life is for me to place my hope and trust in something and then to later find out that I was a fool for doing so. To later find out that it was a mistake. To later find out that that wasn't right, that was actually wrong. And in the world we're living in, that is becoming harder and harder every single day because truth is no longer an objective reality. It's no longer right and wrong, black and white, uh, you know, either correct or incorrect. Truth, especially in this uh, postmodern era that we're living in, you know, it's, it's my truth versus your truth. And my truth can be correct, even while your truth is correct, even while those two truths are diametrically opposed to each other. And so truth has just been, it, it, it's, it's placed that in front of us as, as, as not something that we can rest in, but something that we almost have to be afraid of, of what is actually true. Well, I'm not really going to speak to the broader cultural context of truth. I'm not going to speak to kind of all of the ways that truth has been um, sacrificed in so many ways. Rather, I want to point you towards the ultimate truth that we have and the ultimate authority that we have in one area in life that while we may live in fear of being uh, of, of being a fool in, a, in how we trust in cultural aspects, an area that we can trust in and know this is true. And you probably guessed it. It's the Bible. The Bible, dear saint, is one hundred percent true. It is, to use a theological word, infallible. It is without error. It is truth. And why can the Bible be, be why can we call the Bible infallible without error? Why can we say that it's 100% truth? Because it's not written by the hands of mortal, sinful, broken, foolish men. It's written by God. Yes, he used man, and the Spirit um, uh, impressed himself upon the authors that are contained within. So yes, it was written by human hands and in, and in human language and in human cultures. But ultimately, the ultimate author, the ultimate authority in Scripture is God himself, who cannot lie, who is truth. I mean, it's not just that he speaks truth. He is truth truth. He sets the standard for truth. And so as you and I are looking for the black and white, what is true and what is false, what is right and what is wrong, we get to look to scripture and see that this, these words, these concepts, these stories are true. So let's go back to that fear that I had. and You probably have as well. I may look like a fool for the political party that I vote for. I may look like a fool for the, some cultural thing that I believe in. But when I stand before the Lord one day, I'm not going to look like a fool for whom I place my faith in. When God says, what, to, to use the kind of that um, ever popular question, why should I allow you into heaven? And when I say because of the finished work of Christ, that's not going to return void. That's going to be true. That's going to prove itself right. Why? Because the Bible declares it. The Bible is the ultimate authority on our redemption. The Bible is the ultimate authority in our life for us to know how we as sinful and broken men can one day stand before the Lord, be reconciled to Him, and have the hope and have the peace and have the rest that we are good with God. Why? Because of the finished work of Christ that's described within these 66 books. Now notice that when I'm talking about this ultimate authority, this ultimate truth in the Bible, I'm I'm having it in the concept of redemption. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it in the walls of redemption because that's what the Bible is all about. The Bible has a purpose. 
That purpose is to tell us as sinful human beings how we can be reconciled to a holy God. And it pretty much stops at that. It doesn't talk about scientific discoveries, and it doesn't talk about um, the political parties that we should have, and it doesn't talk about a variety of things that I wish the Bible would talk about. I'm serious. I wish the Bible would talk about it. But it doesn't. And I think that's because the Lord knew what we ultimately needed to know. And then he allows us as humans to figure out the rest in a vain attempt. And then I know when we get to heaven one day, he's going to go, that's so funny what you thought that was actually doing. Well, the, the way that that really worked, the truth in that really was blank, but he's not going to judge us on that. Dear Christian, you may fear voting for the wrong political party and fear it because you're worried that God is going to get, you're going to get to heaven one day and God is going to go, you voted for the wrong president. You're out. He's not going to do that. You, you want to know what that also means? You may think that your brothers and sisters across the aisle are voting for the wrong president. And guess what? God's not going to judge them on that. What God is going to judge them on is the truth that is contained within these 66 books. And he's going to judge us mostly on whom are we placing our faith in. But I just want to point out one, um, one struggle that I have with that reality. I 100% I, I agree, believe this is, the, this is our ultimate authority. Everything contained within these 66 books, these words, is completely true. And that I, as a broken, infallible man, have to subject myself to these truths. But here's where the rubber meets the road, and <clears throat> I struggle with it at times. There are things contained within this book that, in my sinfulness, in my brokenness, in my blindness, in my fallibility, I struggle with. Like, if I were to write the Bible... I wouldn't write it this way. I would take certain parts out. I would say, mm, that's a little too far. That's, that, that, that doesn't make sense to me. But when I approach Scripture, and when I approach those parts, and when I read those details, and when I read those commands or those truths, I have to subject myself to it and go, I'm not the standard. God is the standard. Truth doesn't lie within me. It lies within Him. And so, yeah, that, I may struggle against that for whatever reason, but I can trust that what the Bible says is true. And even though I might struggle against it now in my sin, one day when I'm in heaven and I see truth, the person of God in person, when I see truth in person, I'm going to go, I get it. I can see it now. But maybe now that truth is just faith. Faith that what God has for us, what God has commanded of us, that the our best life now, if you will, is contained within these 66 books and is contained within the truth of the gospel and the story of redemption. I hope that that's an encouragement to you today. I, I hope if you're struggling with just trusting in what, struggling to know what to trust in, struggling to know what if I make a mistake, if I trust in the wrong thing, dear saint, God is going to judge you not on a litany of other things that the world says you have to get right or wrong. God is going to judge you on what the Bible says. And what does the Bible say? Dear sinner, place your faith in the finished work of Christ, and that will not return void. Thanks so much for listening. See you on Sunday.